Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Joechem. All right, so I know we've talked about aldol reactions before, as well as aldol condensations. However, I wanted to just do one more video because I didn't think I hammered home one thing that I feel like I've noticed about the way teachers ask aldol, like uh, you know, regular aldol reactions, aldol condensation questions. So if anything, this is just extra practice with aldol reactions. Okay, so in aldol reaction world, we can either have a heteroaldol or homoaldol reaction. So when you have a hetero heteroaldol, whether it's a, just a regular aldol reaction or a condensation, that means different, right? So that means the enolate or enol you are attacking with is not did not come from the same molecule as your substrate. When it's a homoaldol, you make your enolate from this, the thing you end up attacking. So I said a lot of words. Let's actually put them to some examples so you know it's much clearer. <clears throat> okay, so for example, if we did a problem like this, okay, so let's say I gave you uh, butone, right? Just a four carbon ketone, and all I give you over the arrow is LDA, negative 70 degrees THF. So cold, right? Big bulky base, we have kinetic enolate conditions, and this is all I'm giving you. So whenever, in my experience, I've seen a question posed like this, this means you have a homoaldol situation. Homoaldol because this is the only thing you can make an enolate from, as well as, right, we don't just have one of these. It's not like we made an enolate and we're out of stuff. We have a solution with millions, billions, maybe millions, large amount of molecules, right? So this will be an enolate. We will create this enolate in particular, right? Because this is the this is the easier place to do alpha deprotonation with the big bulky base with cold conditions. But remember, this is the this is what we will attack. This is a carbonyl. That's the substrate we're going to work with. So, sorry, I forgot to do this. Electrons swing down. We attack our carbonyl carbon. Electrons swing up. So, before I finish the product, right, I'm going to redraw my enolate, which has reformed the carbonyl right there. Remember, I bond from my alpha carbon, and then I will I will dot that carbon. I will asterisk this carbon. So remember, off my asterisk carbon, I just have two carbons and one. So, well, I have my O minus, I have one, two, and one. Right, and you can assume there's water, there's gonna be a cleanup step. So, mainly what I wanted, why I wanted to include this video let me make sure I do this right. Uh, I don't think I did. There we go. Is that when you just are given one thing, sometimes students freeze. They're like, what do I do? I'm expecting two things, right? I have a, I've, I'm supposed to make an enolate or an enol, and then I'm supposed to attack something. But they can do, they can come from the same source, right? So this is a homoaldol situation. Now let's look at a much more obvious heteroaldol situation. If you get something along the lines of yeah, that's, maybe what you get is a first step of hydroxide, THF, zero degrees Celsius, and then something like this. And why not? Maybe even get a third step of heat and base and water, okay? So, I hope what you're thinking is, all right, first step, I'm gonna make my enolate, and it's these are conditions for a thermodynamic enolate. So my enolate looks like this. I'm gonna make it on the more substituted side, like that. Okay, so hopefully, the difference between here and here is step two. We're given a carbonyl. We're given something to attack, right? We're not just going to attack the same thing we made, we generated our nucleophile from. 
So, I'm going to make some space. Right, remember, electrons swing down. Electrons come from the alpha carbon. They attack the carbonyl, electrons kick up. I'll draw the initial product over here. So I'm going to draw my ring, reform my carbonyl. I'm going to draw this methyl group as straight up so I can kind of draw my extra pieces over here. So I have my dot carbon as my alpha carbon. And then I'm going to asterisk the carbonyl carbon I attacked, substrate. O minus straight up. And then off the asterisk, I have one, two, three. One, two, three. Cool. So I hope what you're seeing is, right, two will have like, you know, this thing won't stay like this. We'll have this protonated up. And remember, since we're in base, right, because I'm adding heat in base, you know, cranking the, the temperature up, this is going to go to the, uh, well, actually, okay, I'm glad I did this. This actually wouldn't change anything, right? This normally would mean, you know, aldol condensation in base. However, remember that you need a you need a proton at this position to eliminate to then kick off this right and produce water in the condensation. But we can't actually do that because this is a quaternary carbon. There's no hydrogen to eliminate there, so this is our final product. So didn't mean to do this. Honestly, I wanted the condensation in this example, but this really does nothing. So a nice little reminder to look out for the fact that you do need a hydrogen there to eliminate, to get your condensation product. Okay, so I wanna just erase, I'm gonna pause the video, I'm gonna erase this, I'm gonna do one more example of a, of a question I think is a good question. It's a, we haven't talked about enols at all, right? We haven't done anything in that realm in an aldol condensation, so I'll wrap it into this and then uh, we'll call it a video. Okay gang, let's do one more example and then call it a video. All right, so if we look at this problem right here, doesn't look like there's a lot going on, right? And to be honest, that's right. We have a chain, a dicarbonyl, and then we just have acid and heat. So hopefully, right, I know we're talking about aldols right now, but this is a perfect formula to do a homo-aldol condensation. Because remember, because we're an acid, we have to work with enols. And remember, when we work with enols, because they're not, not that nucleophilic, the one thing that drives their condensation reactions to completion is the production of water at the end, right? The actual driving it off and making the double bond. So, remember, when we do enol formation, right, we make the most stable double bond. So, luckily, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, well, I'll I'm going for an even number. However, we are symmetrical right here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got two carbons in at the two position. It doesn't matter which carbon we work with here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just do my enol formation this way. So what that would look like, right, is I would protonate this first, and then a water will come along, do a little elimination type deal, right? We get our enol right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. Okay, so remember, we weren't given something to attack, so we're attacking ourselves. And I think you'll realize this is gonna work out pretty well because since this is our alpha carbon, right, and we will attack this carbonyl carbon, does that make sense, right? Like, we're, if, if we're doing this, we're doing a cyclization reaction, right? We're gonna make a ring. So hopefully we're making a ring of a good size, right? meaning not like a four carbon ring, not like an eight carbon ring, hopefully six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Would you look at that? It's like someone made the problem to me nice, which was me. So, right, we're gonna make our six-membered ring. It's gonna be great, and then we'll just, you know, eventually get to our condensation product. But we, let's do the attack first. Remember, before we attack, right, this will be protonated. So I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna be a little lazy. We will protonate this first, and we'll do an attack, right? So we'll electrons swing down, our alpha carbon, right? is going to close the ring like this. So these things are sometimes hard to redraw. So what I'm gonna do is I always just draw a six-membered ring because I know I made one. And what will happen there is I know my dot carbon is gonna be carbon number one. 
and then I got two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm just gonna look at my structure and then pretty much play who's attached to whom, you know? So on carbon six, I see I have this methyl group as well as an OH. I see on carbon one, right here, I have one carbon two, and I have an OH right here as, or it's not an OH rather, it's uh, it's this, right? Because I reformed the double bond that gives oxygen a positive charge, right? So this is what I have going on right here. Okay, so remember, we have to get to the condensation. That's the whole spiel with uh, enols. So what I'm gonna do in this step is I need to prepare this OH to be water, to get driven off. I also need to clean up this carbonyl. So this is a little proton shuffle step. I have lots of hydronium available. So I'm gonna protonate as well as grabbing water to deprotonate. So I have my carbonyl up here, oxygen is neutral. I have water ready to leave. And remember, we need to have a H next door ready to be picked off to help facilitate the you know, dry, dry, you know, water production. So I'm gonna use water right here, grab the H, make the double bond, water leaves, right? That's the minus water step. And we get our nice react, uh, product right here. So a long, fun, homo-aldol condensation with an enol, right, in acidic conditions. Okay, gang, at this point, you are now experts at all things aldol condensation, aldol reaction, um, homo, hetero. Thanks for tuning in. If this was at all confusing, go back to the first aldol reaction video where we really take it step by step and break down uh, you know, aldol in basic conditions, aldol basic conditions with heat, and uh, you know, uh, aldol condensation in acidic. So, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video.